Okay, here are our two particle motion problems. So we have to remember that the net distance, the net distance is always the ending time minus the beginning time. Sorry, that's not the beginning time. The beginning time is two. Okay, and it's helpful to have a calculator for this part. Okay, because when you plug in six into here, we get some pretty big numbers and we end up getting an answer of 253 units is the net distance traveled. Okay, but then the total distance traveled, we have to figure out some other things. Okay, because if it goes to the right and then comes back to the left, right, we got to be able to add in those distances. Okay, so this is just from the beginning to the end, right? Net is from the beginning to the end, so if it comes back here, then our net distance is from the beginning to the end, right? This is our net distance, where your total distance is all the distance traveled added together. So we have to always see, has the velocity, well, not velocity, okay, let me get a step in that. Has it changed directions? Has our particle changed directions? Okay, that's the question. And we know if the particle changes directions, if the velocity ever equals zero, right, then it comes to a stop. So if it comes to a stop and keeps going, right, then it hasn't changed directions. So we have to figure out if the signs change, because if the signs change, it changes direction. So we're going to take the velocity with respect to time is the derivative of your position function, which is 6t squared minus 12t plus 8. And we want to see when that equals 0. Okay. So let me go back. I know you probably didn't write it down fast enough. So I can divide everything by 2 right now and get 3t squared minus 6t plus 4 equals 0. Okay, and if you look in a calculator, and I did, I get a quadratic that never crosses the x-axis. And if the velocity, or if it never crosses the x-axis, that means your velocity is never equal to 0. Okay, so it's good to say this. We have to say that the velocity never changes. So this is an always increasing function. So it never goes to zero, so your net distance is the same as the total distance for this problem. Okay, so we're gonna do a similar thing with our second one down here, and you're gonna need a calculator to do this also because there's our p-value. So once again, the net distance is always the end, which is 5 pi over 4, minus the beginning, which is pi over 6. Okay, so plug these two numbers into your calculator, right, for your t, for both of your t values, and we should get an answer of 0 0.989 units, I guess feet, since we're in feet are our units. Now the distance, uh, the total distance is the one we have to check. So we're going to take the velocity, which is the derivative of our position function. So the derivative of t is 1 plus 2. The derivative of sine is cosine. It's cosine t, I guess we should call it t maybe. And we want to know when that is 0. Okay, so here is a trig equation that we can solve for t, and we get that the cosine is negative one half. So where on our unit circle is the cosine equal to negative one half? And that happens to be in the second quadrant at two pi over three. Okay, so sure enough, our um, particle changes directions Right, it's 0 at 2 pi over 3. So we can do a sine analysis, right, 2 pi over 3. And to the left of 2 pi over 3, we find out that it is a positive on the left and negative on the right. So sure enough, it does change direction. Okay, so our formula to find the net, or to find the total, is going to be the absolute value of 2 pi over 3 minus our original pi over 6 plus right the end point at 5 pi over 4 minus our 2 pi over 3. 
And once again, it's really handy if we have a calculator to help us do this. Because when we do, we get a total distance of 3.615 units, or rather feet are our units traveled. Okay, so significantly more is our net distance than your total distance. Okay, because you change direction and you go right and then you come back to the left. All right, so this is your this is your net distance traveled is this much from your beginning to your end, but your total distance is the sum of those two.